Lawyers of Reddit. What is a detail that your client failed to bring up to you that completely lost you the case? A friend of mine is a lawyer and he said that a client once turned up to court in the actual same outfit he was wearing in the burglary. When the CCTV footage come up in evidence, the client looked down to himself and was like, ooh shit, edit, my first ever awards, cheers. Unfair dismissal case. The client claimed to have been dismissed without reason or following procedure. After we had started the case, it comes out that not only was he given three written warnings but he was also called in for a disciplinary hearing before his dismissal. Don't lie to your lawyer. Not a lawyer yet, but I clerked for a DOS office throughout law school. Obviously we don't have clients, but I'll never forget this kidnapping case I worked on. It involved two Asian male defendants who were both the same age and looked relatively similar. Witness is on the stand and is asked to identify where the defendant who pushed an Uzi into his face is seated. It's clear the witnesses is having trouble differentiating the defendants. In a true moment of brilliance, one defendant raises his fucking hand and basically points to himself like right here bud. Hands down the dumbest shit I'd ever seen. I thought his defense attorney was going to have a brain aneurysm. That he filmed his offenses for his YouTube channel. The cops didn't even know. A witness brought it up on day three of a trial. It was a nice quick change of plea that afternoon. I am actually a lawyer, but I was only watching this trial, not participating. So the case was, that woman A had hit woman B in the head with a heavy beer pint at a bar, and woman B got pretty serious injuries. The defense claimed that woman A had not hit anyone with the pint, but instead had just thrown the pint into a random direction, and it happened to hit B in the head, thus it was an accident and not a battery. Well, the prosecution had a CCTV tape from the bar, and it was shown at the trial. And the tape clearly showed in HD as they walked behind B, and smashed the pint to her head so hard that the pint shattered on impact. I looked at the defense lawyer and his jaw literally almost hit the table. The prosecutor also noticed this and asked something along, thrown, eh? And the defense lawyer said that due to technical difficulties he couldn't get the CCTV tape open on his computer when he was reviewing the evidence. Woman A was found guilty. So yeah, I was completely dumbfounded. A defendant was written a cell phone ticket while driving and defended himself. Your honor I was not using a smartphone while driving. I was actually using a flip phone. Guilty. I'm a public defender in an area with lots of meth use. Meth makes most people talk. A lot. So I can't tell you how many clients forget to mention that they got to the jail still high and called their mom, girlfriend, buddy on the recorded jail phone and not only confessed to the crime, but also brainstormed whatever alibi or version of events I'm relying on to defend them. Edit. I'm seeing this question a lot, so I'll add some info here. This. Is. Not. Legal. Advice. Just explaining things a bit more. Calls to a lawyer are privileged, and generally go through dedicated lines that aren't recorded, depending on the facility. Calls to family, friends, etc. through the normal phones are not privileged, are generally recorded, and can be used in court. There are usually printed signs near the phones and a recorded warning before each call that this is the case. Employment law matter. He claimed to have been unfairly dismissed over bogus performance management. The real reason. He organized via Craigslist to have someone collect a box of his cum from a children's playground. There were explicit messages from him asking what they did with it, and whether they rubbed it all over themselves. The employer provided us the messages. Edit. He was doing this on company time. Case as a paralegal. Negligence case. Client argued that a lack of street lights and a cyclist he couldn't see was responsible for him hitting a wire pole. Upon discovery, the first respondent's report indicated that they found the driver in the driver's seat, pants down, with porn playing on the phone. Wasn't difficult to figure out who was negligent at that point. Not a lawyer, law student, and not exactly what you asked for, but I feel like it fits here anyways we read about a criminal case in which there wasn't enough evidence to convict the suspect, so the suspect was not guilty due to reasonable doubt, and he responded, thank you judge, I'll never do it again. DA went into appeal and dude got convicted. I'm a court-appointed attorney for qualifying individuals in family matters. Termination of parental rights case. Have been fighting to argue that parent is stable, working lawfully, has a suitable apartment, 
doesn't need psychotropic meds anymore, ready to be a parent, etc. After a few months of negotiating with all the parties in Department of Children, Court Services, we have a pre-trial to try and convince guardians. I meet with my client before the hearing to see if anything changed. Nope, all good. Let's get my kids. Great, that's not happening today, but let's try. We get going in court. My client, who is super hot-headed and quick to anger, gets riled up and goes off on the guardians. Screaming in open court. It doesn't end there, but reveals one. That no longer is working. 2. No longer in apartment. 3. Doesn't want to have a relationship with guardians despite her kids loving them. 4. Won't send her kids pictures of the toys they miss and can't have. 5. Plans on moving out of state. 6. Thinks they can live as a family off of state aid when she gets then back, and is 4 months pregnant. All in the matter of 15 seconds, I was too shocked to even react. Speechless. Not the image of stability and parental fitness I've been trying to paint since last July. Edit to clarify client was working really hard to get everything right, and legitimately had everything going for her prior to this hearing. I was not making false representations or trying to get a monster reinstated. This was a true bombshell as I did my due diligence to make sure things were on the up and up and statutory requirements were met. Things feel part very fast apparently. This was a very atypical situation. Parents typically do a really good job working hard to meet their requirements. Not my client, but the son of the opposing party, and presumably the party himself, lied about being blind to make himself seem more sympathetic as a witness. We didn't know either until he took the witness box, their counsel asked him to take the oath, and he picked the card up and read it. That was the cherry on top of a series of ridiculous events. The judge dismissed the whole thing in our client's favor shortly after. I was a trainee at the time, but my boss, who was in her late 60s then, said it was the most ridiculous case she'd ever handled. Had a woman with an expensive fur coat and she claimed that the laundry ruined it. It was kinda ruined but the laundry claimed those stains were already there. Judge ordered an expert opinion, lab, and the fur coat had traces of cocaine and other illegal drugs all over it. There was a raid at her place then and her husband got convicted because they found several kilogram of drugs. I was involved in a hit and run car accident. My leg was pretty mangled. However the driver of the car was caught. Turns out he was a rich kid who was driving his mum's convertible porch. Denied all knowledge of hitting me etc. At the trial the prosecutor asked him how long he had been driving to which he answered do you mean how long have I been driving legally or illegally? The judge then went nuts asking why and when he had been driving illegally. His defense team sat Dion in their chairs and shook their heads. Needless to say he lost the case. Interestingly he died a year later by drowning. He had hired speedboat and holiday, flipped it over and drowned. Turns out he was drunk at the time. Karma can be a cunt. A Not a lawyer. My parents had a long messy divorce that took 2.5 years in court. My dad claimed that my mother was trying to take 100% of everything based on a settlement offer she sent him. He failed to mention to his lawyers that her initial offer, also sent to his previous lawyers, was a 60-40th split and she only sent that 100% one in response to an equally unreasonable offer from him. As soon as she could prove the initial offer was reasonable the judge just basically ruled on everything according to that first offer. His lawyers were so angry because they built their entire case around the idea that she was the unreasonable one. I think it was something to do with arguing that she was not sending genuine settlement offers, I'm not sure why. His goal wasn't to win, it was to prolong the battle. But the original offer exposed him in the lie in front of the judge which made the rest of the process go very quickie. UK. Not a lawyer as such, but a planning consultant. Client signed sworn affidavit stating he'd been running a truck park business for over 10 years on a piece of land. After 10 years the use becomes immune from legal action. The council checked Google Maps and saw immediately he lied had only ran the business for 7 years. He had committed a criminal offense by submitting a false sworn affidavit. Plonker. Not me, but my mentor. This is the reason you never ask questions that you don't already know the answer to in court. During the trial with the judge on a divorce matter, the wife brought up that he had abused her during the course of their marriage. Client whispers to my mentor that that is absolutely not true. 
On the stand, during his portion of testimony, my mentor asks, at any point in the marriage, did you lay your hands on your wife? One time we were having an argument and I held her down on the couch until she stopped arguing with me. What? My mentor said it was like she could see it happening in slow motion and all the alarm bells were going off in her head because he had never mentioned this and, apparently, to him, this was not abuse. The judge gave wife a lot more money as a result and husband was baffled. My mentor was fuming. ETA. Husband admitted this was the only time he had laid hands on wife. My mentor was more peeved because she had thought the case was in the bag since wife had abandoned the kids with husband to run off with her lover down in Florida and literally only came back to the state to get the divorce done. Husband had been noted as being a great dad to the kids and a good figure in the community. Hence why she was so damn shocked at his answer. This one ended my marriage. Well, it was the start of the end of marriage. My husband lost his job in the title, mortgage business. Applied for unemployment, got denied. I decide to help him with his appeal hearing. I asked him multiple times before the hearing is there anything you did that caused them fire you? He says no absolutely not they fired him out of nowhere. Hearing day comes. He testifies under oath that he did nothing wrong, was a good employee, no issues. Upon cross-examination, the other attorney pulls out documents from one of his real estate closings documents he forged and backdated. Had to admit he perjured himself. Needless to say he didn't get unemployment and he didn't sleep at home that night. Not a lawyer but a woman I know received several hefty speeding fines. In my country you can go see a magistrate to have the fines reduced if you plead poverty. She heard about this and decided to give it a shot, so she went to court and told the magistrate a sob story about not having enough money. The magistrate heard her out, then he asked her, Madam, what type of car do you drive? She replied in a tiny voice, a Porsche. Edit. Many have raised the fair point that a Porsche doesn't necessarily cost that much and isn't indicative of her financial status. So I'll add that it was not a beat up or old model at the time. She could have paid the fines without breaking the bank, she was just pushing her luck. She's a wealthy woman who just didn't want to pay her fines and the magistrate wasn't having any of it. Not me, but my dad represented a guy in a civil case. He doesn't normally do criminal law, but in this instance the question of a forged signature came up, and his client lied, saying he didn't forge it. My dad was very clear in explaining that admitting to him wouldn't land him in jail, it would just allow him to build a better defense, but he still denied forgery, and so my dad rolled with it. He said his case was completely cut up once it came out that yes, in fact, his client did forge the signature. Guys and gals, your lawyers aren't a snitch, they're trying to get you the best possible result. Always be honest to your lawyer. Guy in prison hired me to request a modification of his sentence because he was doing very well, completing a lot of optional programs, no rule violations, etc. He had his family come in and pay and everything to get started. I asked the family and the client if he had requested modification before because the law said that for his conviction, he could only request modification twice for any one sentence, regardless of if they were granted or denied. Swore up and down he'd never filed before. You can see where this is going. After spending a few hours going over records and preparing documents, a copy of the CCS, the case record basically, finally arrived. He'd personally filed for modification six times since he was sentenced with handwritten pleadings that were all denied. So the one he hired me for was a waste of time and would never be considered at all. Friend of mine is a defense attorney. He was representing a guy with a lengthy record for assault. Basically this guy took an A.C. unit and threw it at his girlfriend. My buddy tells me he was able to get a plea deal for one year probation no jail time. The judge is all ready to accept the deal when he asks the defendant if he had anything he would like to say. The defendant responds. Yay I don't know why they charging me with assault I never touched her. I just threw an A.C. at her. This is bullshit. Judge rescinded plea deal because of defendant's attitude, lack of remorse, went to trial and got a year in jail.